into what's going on. I'm so excited for this video because we are going to be talking about butters. Everyone loves a good hair butter, right? At least I know I do. However, we have some concerns here. Like, are they moisturizing? Do they penetrate the hair? I have low porosity hair. I have high porosity hair. What is the best butter for me? What is the purpose? What is a butter? We're gonna talk all about it, so stay tuned. Okay, so when it comes to a butter, I want you to begin thinking of a butter as the same thing as an oil, but just a solid version, a different form. That is all a butter is. It does the same thing as an oil. Now scientifically, butters are solid because they have a high amount of saturated fatty acid. Now we're gonna be really specific here, we're gonna talk about stearic acid. That is a saturated fatty acid that actually contributes to the butter, like shea butter for example, that contributes to the solidness of that butter. But on the flip side, you have a high amount of unsaturated fatty acid, like oleic acid. And that kind of gives you that melty, oily, buttery feel that we love so much. So you kind of have like a balance here of a hard, soft, whatever, and you put it together and you get this really dope, you know, hair butter. Now that is what chemically what a hair butter is. Now the purpose. I get asked this question all the time. Do butters moisturize the hair? No. They do not because they do not contain water. Anytime we talk about moisturizing, there has to be water involved. Whether it's the glycerin that has a humectant that draws in water or if it's an aloe vera juice. But in the case of butters and oils, uh, there's no water involved. So therefore, oils do not moisturize the hair. Another question, do they penetrate the hair? It depends. It depends on two things, really. So we go a little bit deeper in fatty acids. The fatty acid has to be pretty small, okay, to actually penetrate to the hair. And there are actually three butters that do penetrate into the hair that has high amounts of this teeny tiny fatty acid called lauric acid. Lauric acid is structurally linear, so it's very flat. So therefore, it can actually penetrate to the hair a lot easier. And the three butters that penetrate into the hair are coconut oil, which is also a butter, because think about it, it's kind of solid. Babasu oil, same with coconut oil as well, and Moro Moro butter. So if you want a butter that penetrates, these are some great butters slash oils to look into. Now on the flip side, the majority of butters like our beloved shea butter and our mango butter and our kapaasu butter and coca butter, they are not going to penetrate into the hair. They are going to protect the hair. So what does that mean, Tanya? That means they're going to create a nice film on the hair. They're going to soften the hair. They might even give you some shine and some manageability there, but they are not going to penetrate the hair, which is okay. Because either way, you need that balance, which leads into my next topic. Why do butters and oils feel dry on my hair? I'm gonna tell you why. Typically, and this is not for everybody, but this is for some people, a lot of times people put oils slash butters on at the wrong time, meaning they are missing a step. Now, I created this really cool method that I think is really dope. I'm gonna make a video on it, but it's called PMP. Now, when it comes to effectively moisturizing your hair, PMP is ideal. What is PMP, Tanya? I'm gonna tell you right now. So you're going to want to penetrate the hair, moisturize the hair, protect the hair, okay? A lot of times people are putting oils and butters on their hair without properly moisturizing the hair. So therefore, you have this film on your hair, but there's no moisture underneath, so therefore it just feels like straw and it feels just like eh. So when it comes to penetrating your hair, the first P, that helps to prevent hydro fatigue. Because the last thing you want is your hair to absorb too much moisture to the point that it just gets weak and starts to break. You don't want that. So penetrating oil or butter, number one. Number two, moisturize. It can be just straight up spraying water on your hair or it can be a creamy moisturizer. Whatever your favorite moisturizer is, that can be what that is, all right? And then the last step is protect. This can be your mango butter, your shea butter, your sunflower oil, whatever. But this combination is going to help you tremendously. I don't talk too much about my hair, but I will say this, I've been doing this method for the past few months now, and my hair is growing, it is super shiny, it's really, really doing really, really good. So I'll make another video on PNP, but that's just a quick little snippet. Now let's talk about the best butters for your hair type slash porosity. Now let's break it down into two categories. If you have thin hair, 
you may want to stay away from the heavier butters because you know it's going to pull your hair down and you're not going to be happy so if you have thin hair i would stick with light oils like jojoba or maybe some grape seed things like that now if you have thicker hair like mine your hair can withstand the mango and the shea butter you know now if you have high porosity hair you definitely want to go towards the heavier butters like the mango or the shea or the heavier oils like castor or avocado because you have these lifted cuticles and you need some help in getting them closed tightly so you can seal in that moisture. So heavier butters like the mango and the shea are gonna help you do that. On the flip side, for me, I have low porosity hair, but I have thick low porosity hair. So I can get down with the mango butter or the shea butter. However, if you have like, let's say thin low porosity hair, then I would say the same thing with thinner hair. You wanna stick with the lighter oils just to avoid your hair feeling way down. Now, can butters change your hair texture? No, they cannot. Butters chemically are not able to break the disulfide bonds in our hair to change the structure, to change the texture of it, but it will weigh it down. So that's why I would definitely mention that if you do use butters and oils to make sure that you regularly shampoo your hair. I'm not talking about co-washing, I'm talking about shampoo your hair with a cleansing surfactant, whether that's coca glucoside, whether that's coca metoprolactane, whatever, but shampooing your hair regularly just to avoid buildup. Also, quick tip, don't put butters like shea butter, mango butter on your wet hair because it becomes very difficult to comb your hair. If you want to comb your hair with an oil, use an actual oil like a sunflower or avocado, but try to stay away from butters on wet hair. Now when it comes to hair care labels and formulations, if you see a butter in like the top five ingredient list, more than likely it's there for texture, it's there for feel, it's there for softness because that's what oils and butters do. Now if you have like an ingredient list that has like 20 ingredients and the butter is way down at the bottom, more than likely it's a marketing ingredient or it's just in there just because and it's not really contributing to the formula itself so long story short I hope you guys enjoyed this video on butter I hope that you learned something amazing I cover a bit of this in my book the curly girls guide to hair care ingredients if you have not gotten your book what are you waiting for get the book it's amazing you're going to love it the link is below definitely check it out and I also have a question for you let's let's, let's take it back to the oil video if you had to go let's say on a cruise Okay, we on a seven day cruise, y'all. We going to Turks and Caicos. We going to Bar. I almost said Barbados. <laughs> We're going to the Bahamas. We're going to Barbados. We are about to have a good time, but you can only bring one butter. I'm not going to share mine yet, but what is yours? Let me know below and make sure your notifications are on because my next video you're not gonna wanna miss it. And I'm still debating what I'm gonna talk about because I'm like, okay, hair grease or the curly girl method? Because I still got some issues with the curly girl method, but hair grease, y'all, I feel like it's gonna make a comeback because hair grease is not as bad as you think it is. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, I love you guys. Make sure notifications are on. Definitely subscribe to this channel and I will see you guys soon, all right? Bye.